Hello, and welcome back. In this episode, we're going to be taking these textures that you can see here, and we'll be using those to make a few building interiors. And, as usual, you can find a link to the PDF file for these down in the description. Okay, now, there are a couple of different ways of assembling these, and the first method is to take one of these long wall sections and glue that to some single corrugated cardboard. And, ideally, this cardboard, or foam core if you prefer, um, it should be around 1 8 of an inch or 3 millimeters thick. However, before we go any further, I, uh, I just want to quickly point out that most of the textures have been split up into 2 inch wide panels, like you can see here. So, for this example, once the glue is dry, I, uh, I've cut out a piece that's three panels wide, and uh, as you can see, I've made the cuts on the outside of the two upright beams. Now, I want to make this into a little corner piece, basically something like this. So, I've made this one two panels wide, but uh, I've cut the upright post in half on the side that's going to be glued to the first piece, if that makes sense. So, uh, when they're assembled, it should end up looking something like this. Okay, now for the floor. So, here I've just glued some of the wooden floor texture to some double corrugated cardboard, and uh, I've done the usual thing of leaving a half inch border on all of the sides where I'll be gluing the normal 2.5D walls. Then, on the sides where I'll be gluing the wall pieces, I, uh, I've left a border that's the same thickness as that of the cardboard, so around an eighth of an inch in this instance. Then, all we'll need to do is glue the walls into place. So, here I am applying a thin line of hot glue to the bottom of the first wall, and then sticking that down onto the cardboard, so that the centre of each wooden post lines up with the grid of the floor tile itself. So this kind of thing. Then we'll do the same thing with the other wall, remembering to glue the edge of the wall as well. And with any luck, that should result in something that looks like this. Now, the one thing you might notice is that before you can stick on the 2.5D walls, you're going to need to cut out a little notch here. And this is just to compensate for the fact that the wooden beam sticks out ever so slightly. And uh, here I am trying to illustrate that. Anyway, I, uh, I just did that with a sharp pair of scissors, and then it's just a simple matter of gluing the 2.5D walls into place as normal. So. Uh, that's all I'm doing here. And there you go. There's the finished piece. And if everything's gone according to plan, um, this can be used alongside some of our existing tiles, uh, you know, just to give the layout more of a sense of it being a building and not a dungeon. Oh, and uh, just in case you're wondering, um, this particular wall piece, it works well with the fireplace that we made back in episode 25. However, as of yet, I, uh, I've not done anything with the back of this piece, but, where appropriate, I have provided a reverse texture that can be glued to the back. So, uh, if you want to do the outside of the building as well, then you can, of course, do just that. So, I'll just quickly do that here. And, uh, and that's the first side done. And now for the second. And there you go. The inside is fully textured. And now the outside is done as well. So yeah, that's one of the ways that you can use these walls. Okay, another way to make the walls is to take this texture here and glue that to some thin corrugated cardboard, or similar. Then we'll need to cut out two pieces that are the same size, so as you can see, in this example I've cut them so that they're three panels wide. And we'll also cut a thin strip of the same cardboard that's around an eighth of an inch wide and slightly less than two inches long and we'll need to make one of those for each of the upright posts. Then we can take the trusty glue stick and do our best to glue each of these pieces in the middle of each post, just like I'm doing here. So that's the second one done, and I'll, I'll just quickly do the other two as well. There you go. Next we'll apply some glue to the back of the other piece, and each of these little strips, and glue this second piece on top of the first making sure that all of the sides line up nicely with each other. And then, we'll just lay a book on top, so that the whole thing dries nice and flat. Okay, so while that's drying, we'll take one of these individual panel textures, 
and glue that to some cereal box cardboard. And once it's dry, we'll cut that to size with a sharp knife. Then we'll cut out the reverse texture exactly to size, apply some glue to the back, and stick that to the other side of the cardboard. So that we end up with something that looks like this. Then we can do the exact same thing for each of the other panels. So, here's the other piece, now that it's dry, and uh, as you can see here, it has three slots along the top, and the idea is that we can take any three of these panels and slide them into place. So, here we have a wall with a door, but we can quickly take the door out and replace that with another piece, and now we have a wall with a window. That's all there is to it, really. Anyway, like before, we're going to need a floor for this, so this time I'm going to have the regular 2.5D walls on these three sides here. And I've cut the other edge to the same width as the modular wall piece that we just made. Next, we'll add a spot of hot glue to the end of each post, and glue that into place, like before. And, as you can see, I like to have the wall pieces half slotted into place while doing this, um, just to make sure that I'm not squashing the posts together. Then, once that's done, this is what it should look like. And, like I say, we should be able to take out any of these panels and replace it with one of the others. So, something like this. However, I will say that I, I also like to trim off the bottom corners of each panel, like you can see in this inset, as, uh, as this can help the walls to sit flat against the floor if you've used a bit too much hot glue on the bottom of the posts. Anyway, now we can add the 2.5D walls in the usual fashion, so there's not much to say about this part really, as uh, it's the exact same procedure as before, um, except that this time I'm going to have my usual 2 inch wide exit on one side. And when we're done, it should end up looking something like this. So I'll just swap out a wall section one last time, and, uh, and there we go. Um, as I say, these are just the two different ways that I like to use for assembling these, but, uh, but no doubt some of you will come up with your own methods as well. But, uh, but yeah, that's it for this one. So here's a picture to show how they might look with a few bits of scatter terrain added. Though I should add that there's two versions of most of these textures. Um, one with a stone foundation that works well with the existing tiles, and another one with a wooden beam running across the bottom, which works better for upper floors and, uh, and things like that. Oh, and uh, I also had a bit of extra space to fill on the PDF, so I've included a few new door textures as well. And, uh, and yeah, I, I know what you're going to say. If I make a roof texture, we could probably build a few 3D buildings with these, so, uh, so yeah, it's on the to-do list. Anyway, as always, thank you very much for watching. Uh, hopefully you can find a use for these, but uh, that really is it for now, so I'll see you next time.